Hi guys, welcome back to Retired for Life. So today we're going to do something a little different and a lot lighter in the uh, physical area of the work. Um, we're going to make a few uh, birdhouses, or at least figure it out. We'll kind of, as usual with everything I do, we'll sort of design as we go and see what we come up with. So I'm going to use some of this scrap wood that I brought up from Art Sawmill and make him a few birdhouses and a few for us here. I'm not really quite sure just how I'm going to do it yet, but we'll start the saws going and uh, slowly put things together. So for the small birdhouse, what I'm thinking, oh, something with kind of a slanted top in it. So that would be our box. And I'll cut this at about 10 degrees. And uh, I think that'll work. So I'm just going to use, I'm just going to put in maybe an inch and three-eighths hole. Uh, so it's fairly small, good for sparrows, swallows, that kind of thing, uh, and see how it goes. But I want to, I think I want to hinge this as well. So i got to figure out how to hinge this so I can open it up and clean it out uh, when I need to. You know, at the beginning of each year, uh, that way it will stop it from getting filled with mold and that kind of stuff and help keep a healthy environment for the birds. So let's put this together. So we've got a floor in it, and there's our front. Need to figure out the hinge. So I want to put this hole in at a bit of an angle, just to be one more defense against water running in. Thank you. 
Well, that's pretty good. So I've drilled that so the nail won't bottom out so I can pull it out easily. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Good morning, guys. So I'm up and out pretty early for me. It's a little bit before nine o'clock and we're doing something a little bit different today. I'm uh, heading down to Arts to help him with his wood processor, uh, which is the machine he uses for cutting up firewood. And I thought that might be interesting to give you a look at. And we also have to hook on my uh, big logging trailer to the ATV, because I've got a plank back there to pick up that I'm using to make some bat houses. And I'm dropping off the dimensions to Art for the sawmill because he's going to cut my base rails for me to go under the sawmill. So we're starting a little bit of preparation for that. So let's get the trailer hooked up and head out. So Art has the processor going. Let's go have a look. So things go up on this conveyor system and then drop down into this chute. a beautiful day out here today again but we're really gonna start suffering for the lack of rain pretty soon uh, it's been really dry we had a little sprinkle yesterday but that really didn't add up to much anyway I've got a little project on the go I thought I'd share with you just for the fun of it uh, we'll have a look at this so this is my old Black & Decker workmate. When I say old, I mean old. This is probably around 40 years old. And the top has been very badly abused. It is uh, basically just plywood, but it's pretty much rotten and coming apart. So I got a couple of pieces of white oak from Art down at the sawmill and I'm in the process of redoing the top. So I've gone from plywood to that. Now that is gorgeous. It's practically furniture. So I've got one side made uh, and I'm gonna continue on to the other side and I'll show you uh, what I've been doing to handle that. So here's the next piece 
Now it's a little bit too wide yet, so I've got to trim it down a little more. And then I've got to make it flat. Now I'm doing all of that by hand with my hand planer and my belt sander. So it is quite a slow and tough process. This piece is actually in pretty good shape. It's got a bit of a dish to it, but not very bad, and it's really quite flat across. <sighs> One of these days I'm gonna get a power planer. That's really close. So one of the things I've never been thrilled about with the uh, with this workmate is this all this rocking action that this has. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to put a spacer in here so that you won't get this, at least, rocking forward motion. There's not much I can do about the back, but I can do something with this. And I don't see any reason for not doing it. It doesn't look like it would block anything. So I'm going to cut an extra piece that will get laminated onto the bottom of my new piece that is an inch and a quarter high and inch and a half deep. And then I'll give it a light trim on the on this table saw to make both faces even. Okay, I got my support blocks cut and drilled, so I've got a basically size for size hole for the screws. And I have countersunk them down to make sure they're not going to be sticking up to rub on things. And I've got a pilot hole drilled into the bottom of my base here, my base plate. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. Line everything up and clamp it. Let's 
tighten our screws into place. I don't want to over tighten these things because I don't want to split the block. Okay, that's got our plate all ready to go. So we'll take the old one off and figure out how we get this one installed. So I've got the support brackets lined up at the end and nice and straight and in center of the rail and clamped in place because I need to make sure that they're going to track back and forth nice and straight. Then we put our block on and center it. And because we've got our support blocks here, it helps with the lineup. Okay, now I can scribe the holes for the slots under there. There we go. So as long as my pilot holes go in the middle of those slots, everything should line up. What do you know? There's my pilot holes. So there's both pieces mounted on there. Let's crank them together and see how they look. That is so much better than what we had before. That's almost perfect. All right, so that is a little bit better than those old plywood pieces that were on there. So this has kind of brought this 40 year old bench back to probably a little bit better than new condition. Now with hardwood, you've gotta be a little extra careful. Now, I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, a professional woodworker or anything like that. So, I'm just sharing with you uh, my experiences. And what I have found, that when you're dealing with hardwood, you've got to be extra careful about splitting and that type of thing. And also, it's extremely hard to put screws into it. So, one of the things I like to do is make sure I've got a pilot hole in it and make sure the screw has got a bit of grease or a bit of oil on it when you're putting it in. Uh, that way, the screw will just go in easier and it really reduces the risk of your hardwood splitting on you. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do to this to help take care of it, now that it's done, I'll probably run the sander over it one more time and then I'm gonna oil it quite thoroughly just to help to keep the moisture in the wood help prevent it from checking on the ends and that type of thing. Now, as I said before, it is very well cured wood, so there shouldn't be an issue with that, but just to be on the safe side. So that's one project down. So next, we're probably gonna run down to Arts. I made him a small wooden uh, toolbox for some tools that he wants to keep separate and doesn't wanna lose them, so I wanna drop that off to Art and then pick up a little more wood as well because my next little project is going to be bat houses. I made some bird houses earlier uh, and now I want to make a couple of bat houses to help combat the mosquitoes and stuff around here because there are a lot of them. All right.
Well, the workmate is all done. I've oiled up the wood and <laughs> it looks more like a piece of furniture now than anything else. The V grooves that you saw me cutting in it work really well for jobs like holding the round shaft here for my weed trimmer. I just used it to replace the carburetor in this, which I was actually able to find on Amazon. So pretty cheap uh, fix, 34 bucks, and it should run like new now. So anyway, that's it for that job. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you out on the trails the next time.